Well, I certainly want to welcome you back to GLBC Connections. Today I want to look at a little bit more of an unusual psalm. It's Psalm 82. Uh, in many ways, the psalm, uh, I think, is almost unique among the uh, psalms. It's a psalm really of warning. And I want to think for just a moment about those of you who are listening, and this is going to include nearly all of us, uh, those who are in positions of leadership or influence. And, uh, you know, that can come in many ways, in many places. Some of us uh, are in leadership in our places of employment. Uh, many of us uh, belong or are part of nonprofits. Uh, certainly there's leadership within the community. There's spheres of influence. Many of us have spheres of influence. In fact, I'm even going to say it's stronger. Almost everybody who's listening to this, in fact, everybody who's listening to this in some ways is in a position of influence and leadership somewhere in their spheres of life. And Psalm 82 is a uh, really a look at what it means to be in leadership, to be a person who is responsible for others. And it turns out to be a psalm of warning. Uh, and it's important to remind us of Psalm 82 because often in those positions we think about the things that we have to get done for the organization that we're a part of or for our own personal success or, um, or even for uh, those who work for us. But those that are in position of leadership and uh, and spheres of those who have spheres of influence were really called to something else. Psalm eighty two was a reminder to the leadership of Israel. In fact, it starts like this in verse one. It says, "God presides in the great assembly; He renders judgment among the gods." And it's a little g with gods in quotes. What he's saying there is. Uh, that is God himself who judges those who are in leadership over Israel. It's a reminder for us that he judges all people who are in positions of leadership and, and all people who have influence. That includes me, includes you, uh, and so we need to be careful. What does God want from those who are in those positions? And here we see how the people in Israel, the leaders of Israel, had failed in the next few verses. He says, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? No, he says, defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. God is upset and he gives this warning to the leadership in Israel because they have not done what he views as their most fundamental job, which is to look out for those who don't have resources, who don't have positions of leadership and influence, they, to look out for those who are poor and oppressed. And, you know, it includes uh, fatherless children, it includes widows, it includes needy people, it, impl it includes oppressed. It's a reminder for all of us who have been given so much and so many opportunities that our primary job is not to continue just the mission of the organizations of which we're part. It's not to continue to... Uh, work on behalf of the success of those organizations, although that certainly is part of what we do. But more fundamentally, our job is to look out for those that are poor, those that are oppressed, uh, those that don't have resources. And when those two things, those, those two ideas come in conflict, the idea that we have to uh, uh, work for our own success and for the success of the organizations we're with or that we're part of or the communities that we're part of, and, and when it comes in conflict with the idea that there are needy and oppressed people, when those two things come in conflict, uh, God is reminding us that we are to choose the poor, the needy, and the oppressed. All around this nation, even today, you see that in, in smaller communities, including communities like Grand Ledge and Lansing, when uh, things like housing for needier people, for poor people, or uh, hospitals, or um, halfway houses, uh, when they are... Uh, when people ask to build them, very often the response is, you can build it just not here in my neighborhood. Uh, I think that is the opposite, really, of what God would want from his people. Uh, and that's just one way I think that plays itself out. I think there are numerous ways, many ways in this world in which that plays itself out. And so the caution today is to think about uh, the places in which you are leading, the places in which you have spheres of influence, and think about 
who are the poor, the oppressed, those without resources, and what is your role in their life? That's the important thing. That's the thing God's calling us to do. Uh, I'll let you re- read the remainder of this psalm on your own and find out what happens to the leadership of Israel. Um, but I'll give you a spoiler alert. It's not good. Uh, it is a warning, but also a hope in Jesus Christ that uh, as we do these things, that as we work on behalf of the poor and the oppressed, uh, that even when it doesn't go well, uh, all is not lost because the kingdom has come and it is coming because of the death of and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we work on behalf of those things. Uh, Sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes we struggle, but we have hope. So the call today is just to think about where you lead, where you have spheres of influence, and think about who around you doesn't have resources and how you can help them.